Thank you guys. Here we go again. We're back in the bubble. We're up against it once again every week. Every show is a bonus. Last week, tremendous show. Uh, Women's World Championship triple head of the great Katie Taylor. The numbers were through the roof. Boxing is buzzing somehow, some way, and we're finding a way to keep cracking on with great shows again this Saturday night, live and exclusive on Sky Sports and on DAZN in the US. We start with a great fight. It's Davis against Cairns for the English bantamweight title. And these are the kind of fights that I want to kick off the shows with. Real 50-50 fights, massive opportunity for these guys to make a huge, huge name for themselves. And this is a great opener to the show on Saturday night. Liam, start with you. Big opportunity. A lot of people are talking about your ability. You get the platform on Sky. Must win fight, must take opportunity. Yeah, I just want to start off by saying thank you to yourself, Matt Room and BCB Errol Johnson for making this happen. And I'm here and ready to grab out with both hands. Super excited and what a card to be on to win my first title of many. People and Sky Sports viewers might not be used to your name or seen you fight before. I made this fight because, as I understand it, both you two are going to be absolute all action for as long as this fight lasts. What can I expect from you? What can the fans see from you on Saturday night? Expect some good, skilled boxing and a guaranteed win for Liam Davis. Your opponent, Sean Cairns, what do you know about him? Obviously, area title champion as well. Expected to give you a tough 10 rounds. Yeah, this is not the hardest fight in my professional career, and I expect that. So I know he's a tall, awkward self, but I'm tall myself, so it's bound to be a great fight, and I just can't wait to get in there now. And... Sean, massive opportunity for you on Saturday night. Again, I love putting these fights on and working with Steve Wood and Errol as well. You know, we, we reach out to these guys, and I say, look, I need an all-action fight. That's to start the TV case. Is that what we can expect? That's what you're going to get. It's like we've both got to take our opportunity, haven't we? So, and it's nice to see that like, Liam's looking past me and I know he's looking past me. So I like that. What's it been like for, for both you guys, but you as well? You're used to boxing on, on Steve's shows. We know that the smaller hall of shows, you know, the, the opportunities just aren't there at the moment. Obviously, no crowds allowed. Been tough, you know, a tough period for you getting through that and, and a blessing that an opportunity like this comes along and Steve Woods pestered me enough to give you that chance. Yeah, I've got, I got to thank Steve and yourself. Um, I was me pestering Steve as well. I was on the phone every five minutes to him. He told me he was in a meeting and then was, something else was going on. I was like, what's going on? What's happening? But um, it's just staying ready and I'm blessed that I stayed in the gym and I seen it as an opportunity, like you said, like there's no small all shows and there's not a lot of fighters who have stayed around the waiting. and I'm going to be ready on a couple of weeks' notice, but me and Liam are, and you're going to get a good fight on Saturday. So, With these chances, it is almost like winner stays on, you know, on these TV shows. The winner, if it can go out and have been a great fight, the winner of that fight goes on and, and gets another TV slot as well. How important is this opportunity for you, and, and how much must you take this chance on Saturday? That's what you dream of when you turn pro, isn't it, being on big shows like this, and... If you can keep that going, it's, it's just amazing. It's the, I'm just so blessed to be here. Like, if you look at my life 10 years ago, it's never a dream me sitting here. Honest to God, it's, it's so blessed to be here and I'm going to take advantage of it and grab it with both hands and you'll have me back again. Good man. I want to ask you about what boxing's done for you. I know it's a bit of a random question, but your comments there about you know, your life 10 years ago. What's yeah, your... I'm a, um, basically a great advert for boxing for what I can do. I'm from probably the roughest part of Liverpool. and <clears throat> I was you're a product of your environment, aren't you? And I was led down the wrong road when I was younger. But boxing took me out of that and look where I'm sitting now. That's why 10 years ago you would never have expected it. Not even 10 years ago, say seven years ago. How important do you think boxing is in the community? to provide opportunities. Do you think that gets overlooked? Yeah. You know, people because... like you, other fighters that have come out of the city, you know, just wouldn't have had the opportunity to, to turn their life around without boxing. No, because where, where I'm from is what it's like in the rest of England, but there's no youth clubs or that no more. Boxing's the only place where the kids can go, you know. It's the only place that keeps kids off the street, I think, in Liverpool anyway. So it's saved my life, boxing. Well, I'm excited for you both. Massive opportunity for both of you. Go and grab it with both hands. Davis against Cairns, English Bantamweight Championship. Guys, if you could come up to the, the, the plates here and we'll have a head to head.
Okay, so that'll be our show, man. Liam Davies is just going to join us on the stream. Liam, you can take your mask off for this one, just on that on that line there. I mean, you're both saying the right things. It's set up to be a terrific fight. Just how excited are you to get going on Saturday? Oh, the upset. Just counting down the days now. I can't wait to get in there and uh, prove and back up what I'm saying because I need to make the numbers up. What about bubble life? I mean, it, usually on a, a normal fight week, it feels like a lifetime ago saying that, but you wouldn't have to be face to face with your opponent every single day of the week, every meal of the day. What's it like just bumping into him around the corridors and stuff like that? Yeah, it's been different, but I've enjoyed it, man. I really have enjoyed it, and hopefully this ain't the first time. It's a slightly bigger platform than what you're used to boxing on. Um, yeah, there'll be no crowds, but you know that there's going to be a lot more new eyes on you watching from home. Um, the bright lights and the cameras, it's not for everybody, it brings a little bit of extra pressure. How do you think you're coping with that and how are you going to cope with that on the night? Yeah, I've been under pressure in and out of boxing all my life, so nothing new to me. I'm just excited and I'm, I'm looking to make a real good statement. Sean said up there that he, he, well, he said yesterday and he did sort of hint at it up there that he's going to bring a very aggressive approach, very physical approach. Is that what you're expecting from him and how do you think you'll cope with that on the night? Uh, yeah, I think if he does, that'll just suit me down to a tig. So he'll walk on. I'm fit, I'm strong, and that'll be his downfall if he does, to be honest. So let him come. And just finally, not everyone will be aware of the boxing family links. Just tell us um, you know, where boxing sort of runs through your family. Your dad's here with you. Yeah, so my dad boxed many years ago. I've got two younger brothers who box. And then there's myself and my younger sister who's going to have a go who's 10. So it's in the blood, 100%. Brilliant. Well, it's a, it's a great family story. Wish you all the best of luck on Saturday night. Thank you, Liam. Cheers. OK, so with these things, it's very much roll on, roll off, live substitutions. Uh, Eddie Hearn is up on stage. And this was a late one added to the card. Jess Smith against Ben Ridings. Eddie Hearn sitting between them. And uh, I think this one could be a cracker. Thanks, guys. Welcome back. Um, this is a strange one. Let me give you the story. So, Hopi Price, one of our great young prospects with Dave Colwell, unfortunately, couldn't box this weekend. And we were going to just... We had too many fights anyway for the broadcast, so we were just going to leave it. And I said to the guys in the office, couldn't we just give someone an opportunity? Couldn't we just phone around, see who's ready? Who wants a war on Saturday night? And we come out with these two gentlemen, Ben Ridings against Jez Smith this Saturday night. It is going to be a war. Ben, I'm going to start with you. 2-0, and oh, young prospect. Kieran Farrell rates you very, very highly. This is a monstrous, monstrous step up for you. You ready? You got the call? They yeah, said you yeah. were ready. You yeah. are ready? Yeah, no, 100%. Obviously, I was ecstatic when I got the call, to be quite honest, because obviously, as you all know, I was supposed to be in the ultimate boxer competition fighting Zach Ch uh, Chelly. Um, but then, obviously, that fell through because me and uh, Kieran uh, tested positive. So we've been quarantining ever since. Uh, so I was at home, just obviously with the family and that. Uh, got the call. One minute was on, one minute was off. And I was like, oh, God, this is playing mind game. I've been out of boxing for about a year and a half. I'm free, you know. Um, so I've been about boxing for so long and what Zach Chelly's mistake was and I don't know if Jez, uh, obviously Jez has been looking me up everyone's looking at me old YouTube videos bearing in mind I've not fought like that in like nearly two years now I've been sparring the best every week I thought it was only going to be once but then once turned into twice I've been sparring, sparring Callum Smith every single week every Wednesday without a stop every single week um, and obviously there's other greats in that gym uh, I fight completely different I can hold my own it's going to be exciting it is professionally a, a step up for you. You know, we've seen Jez in some great fights, strong, yeah. loves to fight. Saw his, his comments on social media where he's, he's very confident yeah. at getting the win. What should we expect from you in this fight? Do you feel like you have to go out and make a statement? It's a big challenge. I guess you, you're concerned just to get the win, but this platform, this opportunity, you want to put on a show? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm going to fight, obviously, with everything that I've got because, obviously... I'm just a local berry lad, you know, um, it's a massive opportunity, all these cameras here, I'm like ecstatic, like, you know what I mean, for me, and obviously the hotel's gorgeous, oh, like, the bath's amazing by the way, um, but yeah, no, he's a, he's a good fighter, uh, I'm not taking that away from him, uh, but 
if he's trying to look through me and he thinks it's just going to be an easy win for him, then obviously he needs to think different because I am game for the night. Because obviously it's, a, it's big. It's the biggest stage I could be on. It's what I've been wanting to do ever since I was a kid and I'm here. So obviously, yeah, I'm very grateful. Jez, I've, I've enjoyed watching you recently in fights where you literally, every time you fight, you, you guarantee fireworks. I've seen your comments. Is it just, you know, you believe you can win this fight or you just a game as a butcher's dog at every opportunity that comes your way? You've stayed fit, you've stayed ready and you've got a big chance on Saturday. Firstly, I'd like to thank you and thank Matchroom for having me on the show. Um, yeah, I just stay ready all the time. I'm always in good fights, but on uh, Saturday night, Ben's getting smashed, as simple as that. You know, there's levels to this game and he's taking a step up too quickly and he's getting dealt with on Saturday. Yeah, he hasn't boxed anywhere near the levels that you have. You've, you've boxed some very, very good fighters. Um, and again, last time out, another great fight. Do you, do you just think your experience think will my, be too much? I think my experience will be too much for him. He ain't been in with anybody. He's only full journeyman. You know, um, I know he's been out of the ring for a while and he's saying, obviously, if we're looking at his YouTube videos, he's not going to perform like that. Whether he comes and has a scrap, he gets knocked out. If he tries and box, he, he gets smashed. So either way, on Saturday night, it's going to be a dominant performance for me and I'm just going to deal with him. You think over that six rounds, obviously you've, you've, you've done much longer distances yeah. as well. How important is it to start fast over that format? You know, we know that obviously you've been in eight round and ten round fights as well, but six rounds, no chance for him to, to get settled. You've got to make sure you take him to the well very early. I think uh, you can see that with most of my fights anyway. I probably start too fast sometimes, so six rounds will definitely not be a problem for me. You believe you get him out of there inside the distance? 100%. Ben, very confident. We saw John Doherty tell Jack Callan he was going to get smashed last week. Obviously, it didn't work out for him, but... That's the thing. I think, obviously, people play up for the cameras and stuff like that. It might not be, but words are words. You know, we're here to fight, and it, we'll, we'll both find out on the night. I'm, I'm not here to talk trash because I don't do that. I don't do it all over social media. I just don't do that. It's not me as a person. So I do, I do my talk in my fist. That's literally it. Well, we look forward to it. Six rounds. It's going to be an absolute war start to finish. Don't miss it, Ben Ridings against Jez Smith. Gentlemen, a head to head up here, please. Okay, so that's Ben Ridings against Jez Smith on Saturday. Ben, if you could just join us live on our Sky Sports stream, just in that box there. You can take your mask off for this one. So, uh, Eddie Hearn, really bigging it up there. You opportunity to sort of step in at late notice and, and change your life. How does that sound? Yeah, no, it's, it's massive. It's huge for someone like me. And I thought I'd be at home right now. I'm a little baby boy just watching cartoons. But I'm at Sky Sports, you know, I'm in the match room bubble and I'm, I'm ecstatic, so I'm excited, you know, the whole experience is just exciting for me and obviously come fight night it's going to be even better. Preparation hasn't been ideal with uh, your Covid test on, uh, that ruled you out of Ultimate Boxer, but on the other side uh, you've done some world class sparring with Callum Smith, so do you feel that you're um, prepared enough to take this chance? Yeah, I'm more than confident, like I said, I'm doing world class sparring, can't get better than that, obviously he's talk in talks to find the best pound for pound fighter in the world, uh, if I can hold my own against someone like that then I, I reckon I'll be fine. You say trash talking isn't your style. We you said you're going to get smashed. I just wonder um, if people keep poking you in the wrong way, though, if you might come off your hinges at any point. Um, you sort of got thick skin. You're going to keep cool all week? No, I've got thick skin. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm quite mature for my age. You know, I've got, I've got a family and that, and I work full time. I'm, I don't get into that beef. I just don't. I like fighting. That's all I do. It keeps me sane. So I'm just happy that this comes with it. If it all goes wrong and we're pulling you apart in the bubble, I'll remind you of this moment. It's, on, it's live, so you can't get around it. <laughs> it was just, uh, sort of reminds me a little bit about the Kane Baker situation. that um, He answered the call at late notice and he, and he got a win and it, it did sort of really change things for him and that opens up future doors. What's the plan here? Win this, bigger and better things? Obviously, the plan was to win the tournament, which I knew that we had it hands down. Um, so we're just taking each fight as it comes. My boxing career hasn't gone very well so far with troubles with eye tests, medicals, dropouts, everything, but we'll take this fight and we'll see where we go from there, definitely. I think Kieran Farrell's probably had a very positive influence on you as well in terms of the bad luck you talked about there. It's very easy to walk away and do something different. So actually staying true to the cause actually 
should pay dividends for you if you can be victorious on Saturday? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, obviously, Kieran's helped me big time throughout the whole thing, mentally and physically. Uh, I'm ready for it, definitely. Wish you all the best of luck on Saturday. Go well. Thank Thanks, Ben. OK, so just to get my cameraman just to pick something up there, Tom Little is going to sit in front of his poster and Tom Little looks more like Alan Babich on the poster than he does Tom Little. It's just a sign of how much weight he's lost, how serious he's um, taken it. Sorry, I've just whacked someone with a microphone there. Um, and Tom Little yesterday said, Alan Babich looks like an athlete on the poster. I look like someone that's missed their bus. So let's hear what they've both got to say. Not sure I can call him a big boy anymore. He's half the man he used to be, Tom Little. And uh, I think just a sign of how important and how good this fight is going to be on Saturday night. Alan the Savage Babbage against Tom Little in the heavyweight division. I'm going to start with you, Tom. Jokes aside, shocked a lot of people this week just seeing you. Um, I've heard you over the last four or five fights tell me you were going to do the business you knew deep down you weren't really in shape. And looking into your eyes and listening to you earlier, I believe you believe it this time. You're ready to change your life, change your career on Saturday night. Do you know what it is? I had a massive epiphany out in um, Saudi when I got back home. And this runs a lot deeper than just, me, just myself. And it's not that for the fact of what I want to do here, this is the first step, step on the way. And I, I'm hungry. I've made sure that I've not left no stone unturned. And I don't expect anybody to believe me words because, like you said, and I've, I've said a lot of cheap ones, but they were masking agents. I'm going to keep quiet, get me work done. And listen, everybody join, join in on a Saturday and work, what, watch me do what, what I know I'm capable of doing. There has been still people talk about the question marks over Alan Babbage, but every time he has stepped up to a level... Although he made such easy work of Sean Dell Winters, you know, Winters had some good wins, done OK against Joseph Parker, Niall Kennedy, you know, he breezed through these guys. Do you rate Alan Babich as a heavyweight? And you have boxed some good ones. I mean, Philip Hergovic, Daniel Dubois, Majidov. You've been right in at the deep end. I, I rate, rate him highly. And you can't give the man nothing but respect. Whatever's put in front of him, he's blow, blowed away. This ain't about how I rate him. The one thing I will say here... And I say this now, if he can manage to get the job done, he's fighting a better me than Philip fought, he's fighting a better me, me than Majidov fought, he's fighting the best me available. Listen, me and this man here, we promised everybody a wall. We promised everyone blood, blood and guts. La laugh and jokes are all, all, all gone. It's five week now, this is seri serious time. We're going to go out, we're going to deliver everything that we prom promised him, and that is blood, snot and guts. Blood, snot and guts. Is that your version of blood, sweat and tears? No, that's my version of pain and war. Good, good. People talk about Alan Babich coming in light. Is it important not to give away ground in the ring? Have you seen him consistently walk people down and back them up on the ropes? Obviously not giving your game plan away, but you, you um, are the bigger man in there. I, listen, I'm not... A, I'm, I'm not going to run nowhere. I, like I said, I'm a man of my word, and I will meet him in the middle, and we listen. I can stand with someone. It don't mean I've got to be... I didn't promise that I'm going to get hit by him. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not giving no ground. I'm there for, for, for war and to get the job done. And I want that knockout bonus. There's a lot of people, finally, who have been messaging me this week, people in boxing, saying, have you seen Tom Little? I fancy him, you know. Not in that way, but just in the fight. And... I believe your odds with, with, our sponsor, with our official sponsor, William Hill, Gamble Responsibly, have been uh, cut down considerably, I think nine to one into sixes. A lot of people think you can do this on Saturday night. Listen, and I thank them very much for backing me and supporting me. And Listen, I will pay for your Christmas. Do not worry about that. Lump on, bet hard, but when the fun stops, stop. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tom. Wise words, wise words. Alan... Savage, different look from you this time. You look, you look smart, you look all business and ready to go. I think you know this is, this is a real test, maybe the biggest one of your career so far. Thank you, everybody. This is just my way to show respect. You know, I, I look at Metro as my family now. You know, they did me a happy birthday, they bring me a cake. You know, so they touched me, I like that kind of stuff. So this is my way to show all your respect. 
And uh, for this fight, I don't think it's going to be my biggest test, you know. And uh, listen, Savage is mad, you know. Savage is not happy for Tom Little because I've been his friend for three months, you know. When he was fat as a donut, I've been messaging him. And now he said something like, I'm going to finish him and then I'm going to say Hergovic is better. But why, why does he have to keep saying that, you know? Everybody keep doubting me every step of the way, you know. And I've had it. I've had enough, you know. I just keep knocking everybody out in two rounds. What, what should I do next, you know? I'm going to knock him out in one round, you know, because I don't care about that. I just, just like that, you know, I'm an emotional guy, like I said. And they just keep questioning me. Guys, is that, guys, is that the plan? One round? You want to finish this in round, one round? Yeah, that's my fucking plan. You know, and I, don't, I don't care anymore. Because everybody keeps questioning me. They keep, he, he talks all the week like he's going to kill me in one round. Who, who, why do you think to talk like that? You know? I said nothing but nice things to you. And now you take Hrgovic aside. That's a sellout, brother. You can't be in the Savage Army anymore. No, you didn't pass. So, yeah, I'm going to do the job. I'm going to do the job pretty fast because I'm mad. Savage is mad, brother. That is true. A lot of people still question you. I mean, you know... Everybody, I, I, you are questioning me, Eddie. Well, yeah, I do. Everybody I mean, right now, I've got to be honest, I'm definitely not questioning you because I'm petrified. But um, I, I would say that you are finishing these opponents in great style and quicker than other people have done it. I mean, the Shondell Winters fight, you know, people forget that he went deeper with Joseph Parker, had success in that fight, you know, had a very big win against an unbeaten Russian fighter as well. So for, for you, do you feel that way? You don't feel like you're getting the credit? You don't feel like you're getting the respect? Well, listen, I feel there's a ro lot of disrespect, you know, because I only, I only here to, to entertain you, you know, and I do everything everybody wants. And still they question me every single way. They always talk Hrgovic, uh, Hrgovic. I don't fucking care about Hrgovic, you know. He didn't fight nobody. He, he fought body bags. I fight everybody the fans want me to see. They told me Tom Little. I spoke to him. Let us fight, you know. We, we talked for three months. And now, now on the fight week, like I'm nowhere, like I'm nothing, you know. Like I, I, need, I need to go through it all the time. And again, about my weight. Listen, I'm 102 kilos when I entered the, 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 the bubble. Now on 96, the savage doesn't want that weight. I don't fucking care about the weight. You know, stop questioning about the weight. You know, I'm going to be the smallest heavyweight in the whole world if I want to be. You know, I just want people to accept that. You know, and there's a lot of doubt. You know, I don't like it. Tom Little is quite a likable guy, but you seem to be switched on into full savage mode now. I love Tom Little. Alan loves Tom Little. Uh, savage, savage, does. savage fucking hates him, you know, because he talks against Savage. But Alan loves him. He's very like look at him. He's smiling right now. You know, he's a nice guy, but I'm going to get the job done because he talks about Hergovic. I like Hergovic, you know. He knows what he needs to say to tick me off. And he do, you, you want the savage. You have I like savage. both of you. I like, I'm no, not, brother, I'm, I'm, no, I like no, both no. of you. You don't love the savage, brother. You don't know it. I you just, didn't show me respect, not even single. I, ask, listen, ask every of these guys. I gave interviews. I said, no, Tom is a great guy. You know, he's not going to disrespect me. I said it to everyone. You disrespect me the whole time. I just I've saw never it. Never disrespect you. Disrespect the it's whole time. It's a fight time. job, boy. What's up with you? Listen, we're gonna have a fight. That's it. Don't I? I ain't gonna say that I'm gonna come and tickle your chin, am I? I'm gonna say, listen, if I don't believe I'm gonna beat you, it's pointless me sitting here, isn't it? No. You should believe that, but you didn't say it like that. You no, said like, oh, I'm gonna beat him well, before. Listen, I believe I'm gonna beat you, and I don't believe. He believes he's gonna try and take you out inside I, a round. I know. I, listen, I know what he's coming for. You wanted the savage. The savage is here, brother. I'm a, I'm a big, I'm you a big man. It. He might run onto one. Might he? Might he? Might fall over. Be careful what you want. You wanted to meet the savage. The savage is here. Listen. Yeah, I'm, and I don't care. Everybody I'm the can gypsy laugh. Savage, you're messing with a six foot six hippopotamus. Okay. I know like, that. I am coming I said for I know war. That. I won't be running nowhere. I Me said I know that, bang, smack, smack, smack into But me. listen, I have five knockouts in ten rounds. You didn't win a fight in three years. You shouldn't be talking like that. You should show me some respect. If I lost for three years consecutively, I would, I would not talk like that, brother. I would not. Listen. You didn't give me a 1% of that respect you talked about in the messages. 1%. Okay. I just heard every single interview of yours. It's all shit. I will worry you know? about respect after the fight is all done. At the time, you can't respect the man while unless, you're unless, punching lumps. Unless, after I beat you, unless you apologize, we're not going to be friends, I'm telling you right now. Because you're not good, brother. You're a sellout. You're friends. I was, I didn't, is it true? Didn't I talk to you? Listen, Hergovic said you're a bum. Ten times. And you are taking his side. I'm not taking no side. <laughs> yes, Listen, what you, you are, two brother. decide to yes, do is down brother. to you you're two, isn't it? Listen, Don't be a sellout, bro. Al can I? Listen, I'm not here if to talk If you are my about friend, you're my friend for life. Me and you. Listen, to the point is, I ain't here to talk about Filip Hergovic. Filip Hergovic on his own journey. Listen, what I'm saying is, you said it five fought, times. If I fought, if I fought 
that you were a Philip Hergovich, right? Nobody knows how good you are. Nobody knows how good you are. I'm here to find out how good you are. I know how good Philip Hergovich is because he hit me and splat me from one side of the ring to the other. So that, that's the top and bottom of that. Listen, me and you are going to fight. Like, I'm, like I just said to Eddie, if you can manage to get the job done, which, listen, I had to tell you, my bruv, I really don't think, think you will, right? Because, listen, you're fighting a better me than Philip and all the, all the rest of them ever fought. Brother, fought listen, listen, you did, you I, did a bit fair, of... Listen, I could can not I talk now, please? About you... Philip, or do not. I'm here to do damage. I'm here to do war. I couldn't, yeah, okay, get, yeah, I couldn't yeah. care about That's no what everybody Listen, said. I'm ready to fight. Today, tomorrow, whenever, however, whatever it Listen, bro, you did some crossfit and you think you're a boxer no now. Listen, I fight for 10 years. I'm in fight shape my whole life. You yes. did some crossfit in the last one month and you talk like you're the biggest arm, the smallest. Why do you talk like that? What is that? Where is that coming from? It's your insecurity. Because I'm ready to fight. That's where that's Yeah, but you trained for one month. I trained for 10 years. In every single day of the 10 years, I would beat you. Every so single day. That's pretty bad. If it, that's pretty bad. If I've only trained for a month and you've trained for 10 years and I've still beat you. I am. I've trained for 10 years. Yeah. Alan, a lot of people want to see you go deep in a fight. Is this the fight to take you deep? I seriously doubt it, but I, I would love it. I would love it if Top could get me deep. You know, if he could get to be him back, like, like one month back, he was better than he was fat. I like him more. You now he was talking about far, about war, about something. And now he's talking just like, oh no, I'm gonna beat him, I'm gonna, like I'm nothing. You know, he doesn't give me respect. I have five fights, I have 10 rounds in that five fights. I fought guys that are better than you fought. You know, everybody beat you, everybody beat you, brother. You said, I fought this, this, you lost to everybody. Why do you talk like that? Why are you such a loud mouth? Listen, don't worry about who's beat me. Just worry, just worry about you Yes, I me. do worry because you talk shit. Don't you you listen, shouldn't, you shouldn't listen, be talking like that. We'll see what the shit talk is and what the shit talk ain't. Tom course, Savage, course. Savage says one round, two rounds, that's the, that's the aim. Can you take him out? Do you believe you listen, can knock Alan Savage I don't believe out? This jo- I don't believe this sees the distance, whatever way it goes. Listen, I'm a, I'm a realist. Both of us are going in there to really hurt one another. This fight ain't, ain't going to last eight rounds. Whatever way it goes, one of us is going to catch one another. And that's it. I wouldn't be surprised if both of us have to climb off, of, off the canvas at some point. But one thing I can guarantee you, and I'm not looking past whether I have to climb through the pits of hell, I'm here for nothing less than victory. And that is it. That is it. Listen, I don't hold, I don't hold hate in my heart for, no, for nobody. But I'll tell you one thing I don't do either. I don't fear no man. I don't, I've, I've never, I've never been. There's not a cowardly bone in my body. Listen, I won't be looking for that canvas. I will, I'll be, I'll be up on my feet all the time. I've got a beating heart in my chest. I'm there to fight. I'm there to bleed, and I'm there to win. And that's it. Listen, Whether Eddie, I come short did, or not. Did Neil Kennedy said exactly that? Did Neil Kennedy? Say, did Chandel Winter said exactly that? Listen, what Mike Tyson said. Everybody has a plan to get punched in the face. Everybody said that. Everybody said that you're going to outbox me. Nobody did it. You know, I would like him to try. He's not going to even try. He's going to be on his back foot from the f- second one. I know it, brother. I spar Olympians every day. You don't have that kind of team. My coach is Olympic coach. You don't have that kind of team behind. It's mathematics. It's simple. You know, so don't talk big. Don't talk that big. Talking shit about him the whole week for nothing. I didn't say one bad word about you. Well, one bad word. What about you? Well, yes, you did. Well, yeah, yes, you did. I just listened to it. And my, my well, press in my country is killing me because you say something they own. Take it, you know, they, they, they won't even hear my fight. My mother can't watch my, my fight. Everybody's against me, you know. Now when? So, is he a giant? Is he a giant, Eddie? Is he a giant? I want to kill giant. Is he a giant? Will you say, okay, Alan, we're not going to talk about your weight anymore. I'm fucking sick of it. You know, I'm going to be 80 kilos next to that, uh, you know. Give me someone bigger next time. Okay, well, firstly, you've got to get past Saturday night. Alan the Savage Babbage against Tom Little in the ring around 8.30 p.m. Saturday night, Sky Sports, The Zone. Do not miss it. Gentlemen, a head-to-head here, please. Savage, just on the on the line there. We are live. Um, 
Yesterday we spoke to Alan, the, now it's the Savage. Uh, what brought the Savage out of you? It's still Alan. Okay, thank, thank, thank the Lord. Um, so listen, savage, savage needs to say things, and he just said it and he's gone. You know, and now I'm mad, I'm okay. He said up there that if you're going to beat him, you're beating the best Tom Little. That's what you want to hear, isn't it? That he has trained hard and he is coming to win. Yeah, but I hear that every time. Everybody say that. You know, that's just that's just things. Everything everybody say. You know, I don't like it because it's boring. You know? He just talks la 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 like same stuff. Everybody says. You know, they never do it. They never do it. They never go with it. You know. We spoke about it yesterday on the media stream that you want someone to take you deep, that you want to go rounds, that you want to show people um, what you can do. Do you think Tom Little, if he does what he says he's going to do, is going to, is going to be the man to do that? Listen, if he does what he says he's going to do, he's going to be knocked out in one round. If he does that, if he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with me, he's going to be knocked out in one round. There's no way over it. Maybe if he survives the first round, the second is going to be hell. If he survives that, it's going to be over in turn. It's simple, like always. What do you think he's going to do then at the first bell? Do you think he is going to stand toe to toe with you or do you think he's going to try and get on his back foot? He's going to be on his back foot from the second one. You're going to see it. I saw it millions of times. I'm in boxing my whole life, you know, so I see it millions of times. And so you saw how big he is with me. He's going to run around. He's going to run around. If he stands, it's going to be a knockout. You say you want to fight the Giants. He's six foot six. How, how big do you want to box? Yeah, I think he is a Giant. You know, he is a lot bigger than me. I think he's the biggest one. I, I fought bigger in the amateur career, you know, but I like the Giants. I love the Giants, you know, so I just, I'm just out there to prove my point. We saw you hitting the pads yesterday and it was explosive pad work. Does that suggest that from the first bell that we are going to see that maximum violence that you always promise? Like always, like always. Listen, I don't know how to do it any differently. You know, I, I, I know, but I can't. The Savage doesn't let me, you know. I, when I see I just see blood, I just see a target on his face. It's over, you know. I, I'm like a like horse. It does tough. You know, I'll just go one way. It's one way street. From the first second, it's going to be a one way street. Listen to me. When you imagine it, then, with all that being said, how does this fight go? Is this another stoppage win for the Savage? Yes, of course. Of course. I don't care about judges. I don't think he can stop me. And <laughs> what else can it be? It's, 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 a, it's a stoppage for sure. I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure of it. What was it that upset you up there that he said that the Croatian press had, had reported back home? Well, everybody, everything, it really, my press in my country, I don't know why they do it. They're so negative towards me. Everything I say, they took, they just took, they don't even ask me anymore. They just took things I say. I, I put a hashtag, they do 10, 10 stories, 10, 10 new, news coverings, you know. And I don't like that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in big brother, really. I'm a boxer. They should have some respect, you know. And my country is not going to air the fight. That gets on my fucking nerves, you know. I don't like that. You know. okay. My mother can watch my fight. You know. uh, apologies, I know um, obviously English isn't the first language and you're emotional. Just finally, have you got a message for the Savage Army? Because people do tune in, you have got a fan base now, they'll be um, willing you on on Saturday night whether they can watch or not. Have you got a message for your fans? My army I always get lighthearted when I talk about it. You know? that, that's the only thing that matters, my Savage Army. You know? I really love them. I really love them. I do everything for them. You know? And that's why I, 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 don't, I don't understand why they all going on me. You know? Even you said it in the Neil Kennedy fight, like, oh, he's small, he's not gonna... why do you keep saying that? You know, do, you, do you think I'm somebody else? Because I don't think I did say that. I think you did, bro. Did... Were you commenting my no. <laughs> no, this happened yesterday. That's not me. That's somebody completely different. We've had this more than once. A lot of people made that mistake. It's not me. It's someone that sounds like me, but it isn't me, I promise you. I did want to point you... <laughs> yeah, the Savage heard that, but I, I, I'm telling Alan and the Savage it's definitely not... I was about you, actually. Yeah, I know, but when you were talking to me yesterday, I thought, I don't think he thinks I'm that guy, but I was too scared to say it. So now you've said it again, I have to... It's not me. No, it's okay. It's okay. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. Uh, anyway, thank you very much wish you all the best of luck tomorrow go well sorry oh no no there was a handshake but it was a fist bump thank you very much eddie this is an emo emotional roller coaster i don't know <laughs> help, help me out here i mean <laughs> it's an emotional roller coaster andy, please just help help me andy, out here I, 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 say, andy come on have a bit more guts what's the matter with you i just saw you squirming there i mean he I had me in a headlock yesterday so because he thought that i bet against him that i was backing Noel kennedy it wasn't me and i still and i didn't have the guts to tell him yesterday but it's back up no, again I, no i told him it was you no you didn't you i didn't, didn't. <laughs> this is I just can't stop now what how are you dealing with this because we don't know when we're talking to alan and we don't know when we're well, talking to, about it, the savage I saw him out there and he was really friendly who did you see alan or uh, the, saw alan. Oh, yeah okay. but then i saw the savage up there and yeah. it's just it's almost like you could go up to him and go i know you're only joking and he <laughs> 
Yeah, once, once the switch goes, he convinces himself he's someone else. And that's pretty scary. Yeah. I'm going to do this one now. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Oh, well, this is going well, isn't it? I hope you're all enjoying this because uh, I'm <laughs> not exactly enjoying the, the, the joys of November here in the bubble at the moment. But I think we've cleared that up that um, I'm not the person Alan Babich thought I was until tomorrow. Well, that was enjoyable. Madness. We love the heavyweights. We love the drama. And now we go into another great heavyweight fight. Fabio Wardley against Richard Larty. No Larty, no party. Richard Larty has become one of the big cult heroes of British boxing. Every time he comes here, he gives a great, great fight and another big opportunity for him on Saturday night against one of the emerging stars of the heavyweight division in Britain, cruising through the opposition. Fabio, I'll start with you. Welcome. They said last time Simon Valili was going to be the biggest step of your career. You dealt with him in ease. This time, a bigger guy, a stronger guy, a more dangerous guy, ready for another step up. Yeah, of course, always. I'm always ready for the step up. This is this is another fight on that progress, like you said, of me moving forward, proving the, the different tests you throw at me, the different types of opponents, whatever they may be, that I can overcome them, and obviously prove that I'm a, I'm a real contender for the division, that I'm here to, to do some damage and, and make some waves. Richard Larty, very dangerous, very big, very strong, great chin as well. Saw him have a good fight with Dubois, go the distance with, with Gorman without too much problems as well. Can you get him out of there? I mean, he's, he's durable, he's big, he's strong. You've got to be careful. He's, he's a dangerous opponent. Yeah, I think that's the thing with him. You know, you know exactly what you're going to get from him. He's, he's not coming there to roll over. He's not coming there to just get some money and go home. He's coming to take my head off. You, you've seen in his previous fights, he was more than happy to stand there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Daniel and try and take his jaw. And he'll be doing the same with me. So I've got to be switched on. I've got to be paying attention 24-7. And if, as long as I stick behind my game plan, I can always get them out of there. Richard, welcome. I've been a big fan watching you. You can take your mask off if you want. Um, watching you over the last you know, few months, I think people in Britain love to see someone that comes over and just puts it all on the line. You know, as Fabio said, when you boxed Dubois, you had no fear. You were ready to trade with him against Gorman again. The British fans love you, Richard. Yeah, thank you. Very, thank you very much for this opportunity. I respect Matchroom Production for giving this such a wonderful opportunity to appear on the, on the IBO. And big th uh, thank you to Wiley for accepting, to, accepting this contest. And, uh, you know, I don't normally look down upon my opponent, but I speak very positive about my opponent because I have to respect anybody that I come in contact with. You understand, uh, Eddie, thank you very much, Matchroom. And I say, I cannot say my, but what I got to say, no party, no latte is coming on live. And I say, we're coming to do a wonderful work in the ring that nobody can think of. But guess what? The ring decided the best man carried the nine. Yeah. I respect, I respect my opponent and the people that brings me here in London again as, as my third time being in London. I got a lot of fans who I know they are watching out there, but what I, I got to tell them, the, the support that they are really behind me is massive and I thank them for what they are doing for me and uh, Matchroom is doing so big and I hold them in high esteem for giving this opportunity to appear on their bill once again and what I, I tell them, I'm not here to joke, you know, I'm not here to do any stuff, but I'm here to prove my worth and the caliber of boxer that I am. We know that in the heavyweight division, with, with your support as well, you're one win away from huge fights, huge money, huge opportunity. If you can beat Fabio Wardley on Saturday, you know, you're going to have a, a massive fight ahead of you. You think you can do it? Yeah. Yeah. I tell you why not. That's boxing for you. There is nobody who's going to come out there from the long, from the, from the African continent and come over and tell the fellow that he's going to lose. No way. Nobody is going, coming from his home and tell him he's going to lose because he got, he, got, he got family at home watching him do the stuff that he has been doing. So I know definitely something massive and positive is going to come uh, on Saturday night. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. And finally, Fabio, you've got a game opponent. You can't help but like the man, but on Saturday you're going to have to go to war with him and you know that a big fight approaches in Richard Larty on Saturday night, another big platform, your second bubble and looking to close out the, win with another the year with another impressive win. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, it's, it's professional boxing and no issue with Larty whatsoever. He, he seems like a nice, fun guy and it's good to chill with him and have a laugh and that around the bubble. I'm all behind, no Larty, no party. On, on Saturday night we're going we're gonna to have a good party. Just to confirm, I think 
just a little bit confused. A lot of people think it's no lati, no party, but I think you said no party, no lati. Wh- which one would you prefer? Come again. Would you prefer no party, no lati, or no lati, no party? I think the back one, but I'm not as sure. Anna, as an now is total boxing. When it's football, it's no party, no lati. But when it's boxing, it's no, no lati, lati, no party. Okay, good. I'm glad we established that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. We look forward to it. Wardley against Larty. Do not miss it. Cracking heavyweight fight on a ram night on Saturday. Sky Sports, The Zone. Don't miss it. Gentlemen, can we have a head-to-head here, please? Fabio, you can keep the mask off just live on our Sky Sports channel. Um, lots of respect between the pair of you there, but um, serious business when the first bell rings, that's going to go out the window, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Like I'm not the type to force the, the fake animosity or pretend I have an issue with someone that I don't. Like With the last press conference like with Simon and stuff, that was there because me and him had a genuine thing. I genuinely had a problem with him leading into the fight, but with... With Richard, I've got I've got no issue. He's a nice, happy-go-lucky guy, and and he's always game to fight. So I haven't got to try and put that pressure on him to get him to get involved. I know he's going to bring it anyway. So yeah, big test on Saturday night, and one I'm I'm really looking forward to. You got that tag of uh, heavyweight prospects and emerging prospects. Um, what sort of statement do you think you can send out on Saturday night? Um, I'm still always improving. That no matter the type of opponent you put in front of me, whether it is someone like Simon who's who's skillful, good with ABA, whatever. Uh, or someone like Richard who's big and strong and durable that I can always perform, I can always come out the other end and I can always beat these tests that people are putting in front of me that regardless, because people have reservations about my size and how I do when I step up at bigger guys and whatever else. So it's just incremental to prove that I can tick that one off, tick this one off and just keep moving forward. You're athletic and uh, you've got a good skill set. We saw you and Robert Hodgins in the gym last night working on one or two things. What do you think the way to beat Richard Latte is? Box. Clean boxing, clean, precise, nice and sharp boxing. Like I say, the, from the bits that I've seen, my coach has seen, and everyone, it's quite obvious from what you can see with him. He's, he's good at that medium range where if you want to meet him in a firefight, he's, he's more than game to come with you and, and try and slug it out with you. So that's the only bit I need to stay away from, really. And I'm clean, I'm crisp, I can get all them nice shots off, nice and clean, get in and out, and just get that work done. And then slowly, slowly wear it through, wear it down, and then, like I did with Simon, when the opportunity comes pounce on him, get it done. We haven't seen it yet, but if the chaos descends and the, and the red mist sort of comes and you get involved in a bit of a swing up with him, it makes it 50-50, but do you still back yourself in that sort of fight? Always, always back myself. And there may be a point where he, he may be getting too confident in the fight, he may be stepping too forward, where I have to meet him there and show him that, no, like that's not you. I can, If you want to do that, I will take you there and I will beat you there as well. So there may be there moments where we have to stand there for a second, where I've got to prove that point and, and stand my ground and say, no, 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 you're not going to run around here, you're not going to bully this fight, I'm in control here. And if I have to do that, then I'm more than welcome to. I've had many aspiring wars and I can do it again on the night. You've been... Um or you've had good momentum through your whole career so far, but you have been a product of sort of post-lockdown boxing that you've been able to get out second time this uh, since since the summer. So is that um, I don't know? Is that sort of a welcome thing as well? You've got no time to let ring rust develop. You can always continue to build on your craft. Yeah, but I'm I'm moving at a pace of the people that are around me. They're doing the same. They're still fighting. They're staying busy. They're they're staying active, and I need to do the same. I think the thing that all of this is brought with like fight camp and like now is that there's no opportunity anymore for them easier fights for them little kind of really easy ticking over just anything kind of fights every fight now and going forward has to be challenging has to be competitive so someone like Larty, i'm probably taking a few fights early that he maybe should have i maybe should take him later down the line but i'm game the team has full faith in me and i have full faith in my abilities that we're going to come off and get the win on saturday night thanks Fabio. Thanks guys, this is it and I've thoroughly enjoyed this press conference so far. What a great card on Saturday night, great mix, so many opportunities for young emerging stars, English championship fights, two great heavyweight fights and this 
The main event is one that I'm looking forward to so, so much. Conor Ben with the big step up against Germany's Sebastian Formella. The main event on Saturday night, Sky Sports in the UK, the zone across America. Conor, I'm going to start with you. I've lost count in the amount of times you told me you want a real fight. You want to test yourself. You want to find out if you're good enough to progress to that world level. This is it. A few days to go. Excited to face Sebastian Formella on Saturday night. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's, you know, he's got a great record. I mean, he just come off a loss to Sean Porter. I'm excited to get back out of there. I mean, it's been a year now, but this is another opportunity. I get to show everything I've been working on and show where I'm at. And, you know, this is the perfect step and perfect opportunity to do just that. And when I get in there, I plan on showing that I'm the business. I've been grafting hard. You know, my four years apprenticeship's done. It's done. It's finished. And here I'm ready to prove I'm a contender. A lot of people in the gym, particularly Tony Sims, believe you are ready for that step up. You haven't boxed anywhere near at the levels of Formello. It's always risky when you see it in the gym, but you make that first step. You feel that this is the right time. Like you said, he's just finished 12 rounds, a very competitive fight with Sean Porter, was there till the end, still throwing. It's going to be a very tough opponent for you on Saturday. A very tough opponent, but that don't bother me. You know, I'm always up for a challenge and I'm always up for a fight. That's something that's been proven time and time again. The fight with Juicy Cuevilla, people thought well, I was going to lose. That was that a step up. He got banged out in two rounds. People said, oh, he's too experienced, he's too this, he's too that. It don't matter, because when you're in there and you get hit with a right hand, left hook, it don't really matter who you are. Saw an emotional interview with you earlier on Sky, you know, it's, it's been going around the place. Is that, you know, we know you miss your family, we know you made huge sacrifices as well, but was part of that interview as well just how much you want this? You know, how big this opportunity is, how much you want to succeed in this sport? You know what, it's when I look back when Sky posts the old videos of my debuts and new post stuff and then you think oh, I've come a long way and, and realise how much I've missed out on in terms of being with my family and you know how much it's actually taken for me to get here when I used to get up and catch the train at, get up at five in the morning from Ilford Henley Road and walk to the station freezing cold and do my sprints and then sleep at the gym and go back I've done that for about six months straight no one on my back telling me to do that but sometimes I forget myself that I used to do that I used to do that. I wanted it badly then, but I didn't, I didn't understand it. I miss my family. You know, watching my little family grow up, my little sister. You know, there's only so much that can make up for it. And then the novelty wears off, and then you re think about what really does matter. And I miss my family. And, you know, Saturday night, I take that frustration out on my opponent, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've worked too hard to get to where I am now, fit to let it to just slip between my fingers and let an opponent get in my way. And I'm going to go in there and prove everybody wrong. What is that, the reason behind that? What is the drive? What is the end goal? You know, we know that your dad was a British boxing legend. Is it to make a name for yourself in your own right, in your own name? Or is it to continue that legacy that he built? Or is it a bit of both? It depends on the individual who looks at me, Tim. To so many, I'm a role model. To so many, um, you know, people look up to me. Then you have the older generation who I'll always be Nigel Ben's son. But then I have a younger generation that go, oh, you're Conor Ben's dad. So it depends on, you know, who we're talking about here. But at the end of the day, all I want to give people is value for money. People who see that vulnerability in the ring. People who enjoy the career, enjoy the journey. There's going to be ups and downs. I've come through adversity. In, in times when people thought, hey, he ain't going to come back from this. After my second fight, and I know you're one of them, Phil Cole, what have I done here? Who have I signed here? And I come through that. Pay not. I come through that. You know, I've come through adversity and, you know, there's going to be ups and downs and I'm just glad that the British public are really on this journey with me from no amateur background to me being a young novice coming through to now me being where I'm now headlining my second show against, uh, you know, a world-ranked opponent, a very credible opponent. And, you know, these are the sort of fights I wanted, the likes of Vargas's, Granados, Formella. Those are the sort of fights I want and I want to push myself, I want to challenge myself. There's no ceiling to my career. So, therefore, the sky's the limit. But all I know is I'll work hard and I will reach the end goal. I ain't going to put a time frame on it. I don't know when. I don't know what I'm going to have to go through to get there. But I will get there because I've worked too hard to not. Sebastian, welcome. Um, I've seen your team here all week. You look very happy. You've been enjoying yourself, enjoying the, the hospitality with the table tennis and the darts and stuff like that. Yeah. This is a great time to get fights like this. Of course, you are coming off two fights in the pandemic when some people haven't boxed for a year and a half. Big fight for you, big opportunity on Saturday night, and a lot of people believe you will, you will take the victory. Yeah, at first I want to say thank you for the hospitality, 
of course, and the stuff is completely helpful. It's like at home, so it's very cool here to stay here in the bubble. Thanks for that. And yes, it's that people say, okay, I have more fights and uh, fight more difficult people, but uh, Conor Ben is also a difficult fighter with good skills, and so it will be a good fight. And I train also very hard and be ready for the fight. And I will, of course, I will win the fight on Saturday, and I will make it never easy for him. So. A lot of people talking about the Sean Porter fight, the last fight that you had with him. You know, he did win that fight fairly comfortably, but you were there in the fight all the time, even till the last bell throwing. And we know Porter is very strong, punches very hard. He's an elite welterweight. What was that experience like for you in your first <laughs> major fight stateside? I saw always the, time, uh, the same. Uh, I learned to put up my hands to, def <laughs> to, to have a good defense. No, it's, it, was, it was all about a round, yes. I start with the uh, training camp in Salazar's academy with Ugas, I'm inspiring them, and I look like the high-level fighter. I'm training and take a lot of them at home and change a little bit of my training. The physical stuff, I must train more. I, I, uh, after the fight for Sean Potter, I uh, know I must change it. And so I started. I, of course, it's a short time after, short time after the Sean Potter fight but it was enough to change a little bit in, the, in my skills. And so it was a very, very, very good experience, a very well experience, and I was happy to do this fight in America. I guess the question marks over Conor Ben is, is he world level? You know, obviously the likes of Sean Porter, well established. There are a lot of unanswered questions about Conor Ben. Do you have to find those out on Saturday night? Do you have to test him? Obviously you have a lot of experience as well. You've got to try and check his chin as well and, and, and see what he's made of. Yes, of course. I'm. Uh, because I have maybe I was in the ra rankings higher than him, so I'm now the test for him. But he's also a, a good fighter, and I, I saw uh, many of his fights, and he's a good uh, fighter who goes forward, and so also had a good defense if he want. So uh, it can be happen on the fight, everything. Yes, it's a good st uh, step up for both of us because when I win the fight, I have the next good fights for me. Yes, when I and when he f win the fight, he have uh, up, uh, step up for him. Yes, and. We can, uh, the fight can go in both sides. It can be a tactical fight for both fighters, or also we can stand feet by feet, and we have condition both that we can stay feet by, uh, feet by feet and fight and hit us all the time. So that's happened. Well, thank you, Sebastian. It's been great to see you in the bubble and your team, and also thank you to Errol Sealand and EC Boxing for all their support. Finally, for you, Connor, as well, you're used to walking out in front of 18,000 at the O2, no crowds. I know first time around, at the uh, fight camp, you know, is a little bit of unsure, but this is the new norm, and you have to find a way to peek behind closed doors on Saturday night. Uh, it don't bother me as soon as he hits me. <laughs> you know, I'm in the room and I'm ready to go. It don't bother me, I fight in a telephone box. I know my dad had his concerns, but at the end of the day, a fight's a fight, and I don't need much to get me going. You know, so when I get in there, I'm gonna take care of business. Irrelevant crowd, no crowd, it don't make no difference to me. A fight's a fight, and I fight for my, I fight with my pride. And it don't matter, crowd, no crowd. It really does not bother me. It has not even played on my mind one little bit. Because when I get in there, I'm going in there to take care of business. You know, when I'm sparring, what, are there people there? No, I don't need, I don't need people there. I'm fine. I'm good. I'll fight. It doesn't bother me. Well, I cannot wait for this fight. Brilliant fight. Conor Ben against Sebastian Formella. Our main event on Saturday night, live on Sky Sports, Box, Sky Sports in the UK and the Zone across America. Gentlemen, if you could join us for a head-to-head, -head, please. Okay, so hopefully Conor Ben's just going to jump off here and uh, join us live on our Sky Sports YouTube channel. Just to exchange the fist bump with Eddie Hearn. Conor, can you just give us a couple of minutes on the Sky Sports YouTube channel? We are, we are live streaming here. Um, you said at the very top of that press conference there, you view this as the apprenticeship's over now and you want to prove that you're a contender. What do you have to do against Sebastian Formella to, to, uh, to do that? Listen, I just got to win in good fashion, whether I get him out of there or not. I'm good for the 10 rounds.
but then I'm also good to get him out of there in the first couple of rounds. So either way it goes, you know, I make sure I match him in anything he chooses to do. Whatever he brings, I make sure I match him. My trainer t trains me hard enough, you know, makes me, you know, I have to grit my teeth and get through the early mornings, you know, when I'm tired and I'm shattered. And, you know, really pushes me to the brink. And I've got to do that in there Saturday night. And I know my, this ain't going to go, and I know that ain't going to go. So when I get in there, I'm ready for it. Whatever he wants to bring, I'll match it. He said there that he can make it a technical fight or he can make it a uh, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. What do you think he's going to do? It's not down to him. It's not down to him. It doesn't matter about what he does. If he wants to move, I'll hunt him down. And if he wants to have a tear with me, more for him. You know, I soon make him regret that. So I know he's all nice and all polite and that. He's trying to anti Ruiz me, waving me down from across the room over there. And it ain't, it ain't all good when we get in there. When we get in there, it's down to business. And I know he's going to try and come for it. I know he thinks this is an easy fight. I know he does. I've just gone 12 rounds with Sean Paul because I'd be thinking that. The boy is in for the fight of his life with me. You've had a lot of time to work behind closed doors with your trainer, Tony Sim. So if it is a technical battle, I know you're saying you're, you're going to dictate here and you're going to choose. But technical-wise and skill-wise, do you believe that things have improved so much that you're going to show something different that we haven't seen before if it goes that way? Of course. I mean, my trainer's invested a lot of time into me. You know, I'm like a bank. <laughs> being, being just invested. But just, so much time has been invested for me to perform on nights like this. You know, I've worked too hard during lockdown. I've worked too hard with my broken jaw, with my torn tendon, just training and training and training with no fight day, training on a full stomach, being able to do that. And, you know, it shows for nights like this. And this is where I plan on putting it all on display. I've worked too hard over the years. I've sacrificed too much for me to not get it, for it to not click and not register, for me to not perform the way I should perform. I'll get in there and I'll take care of business. If he wants to move, I'll hunt him down. And if he wants to fight, let's have it. And I've done that time and time again. You are a fan-friendly fighter. And I just want to, well, you don't have to, but could you expand on the conversation that you had with your dad and Eddie Hearn about the fans? Was there any doubts from his point of view that, look, you might not get the best out of yourself. You might not be able to, to motivate yourself how you have done when you've got a crowd there. The problem is with that is if you wait for crowds, you could be waiting a long time. I could wait for crowds because in the, the day I'm still young and I'm still in the gym, I'm still learning, there's so much to work on that even if I didn't fight until next year, I still would have chosen to learn and grow and work on so many you know, different attributes uh, to things that I have in my arsenal. But, you know, we wanted to fight, we wanted the right fight. I didn't want to fight all these other bods calling me out that I don't gain nothing from, but yet they gain everything from. You know, I wanted to fight someone who I have to prove I'm the underdog. I want to go in there to, into them sort of fights with that coival. I went in there thinking, God, it's going to be a long night's work. And I got him out of there in two. You know, this is another big step up, massive step up. But I plan on putting everything I've been working on to action. It doesn't bother me if there's a crowd there. I find a telephone box. It really doesn't bother me. As soon as you get here, you know, you're up and you're revved up. It doesn't take a lot to get me going. You know, as soon as he lands saying, I'm telling you, he's, he, he'll know about it. Final question before you go. You come up with a great line there that there's enough people now that are stopping your dad saying you're Conor Ben's dad rather than stopping you and saying you're Nigel Ben's son. I just wonder how that sits with him. Have you had a conversation with him about that? Oh, it's absolutely blinding. We just look at, we just look at each other and just start wetting ourselves because it's just so funny, do you know what I mean? Because who thought that day would have ever come? You know, it's, um, it's madness. We just, yeah, we just laugh. I look at him and I go, you, you hear that, Dad? You know, Conor Ben's dad. You hear that? Don't forget that one, mate, all right? <laughs> Next one you, uh, you need when someone stops the two of you for a selfie that he has to take the photo uh, with the that's fan. Happened. That'll be the one. It has that's I'm telling you, that's happened. Oh, and it's brilliant. And I'm going, yeah, you know, that's Nigel Ben, you know? And it, it, and it don't register. Oh, it's, so it's brilliant, do you know what I mean? I've been waiting for days like this. The okay. same as when he's come and stayed with me and I've gone, Dad, you're under my roof now. You do the dishes. <laughs> yeah, my rules. Okay, I like that. No, so I'll let you go. Thank you very much for joining us. I wish you all the best of luck on Saturday. Uh, just before we finish here, I was just wondering if Eddie Hearn... Eddie, can you just join us just to sum up? I know talking is one thing and fighting is the other, but if you watch that press conference there, how can you not love boxing? That had a little bit of everything, didn't yeah. it? It did, and I think sometimes you look at a card and you know, to, to build a great card, you need great fights, but you need interesting dynamics, you need great stories. And when you look at this card, you look at the English bantamweight title kicking us off between Davis and Kearns, massive opportunity for both of them. You know, could, could see a real young prospect in there come through an unbeaten fighter against a bit of a road warrior who gets the opportunity of a lifetime. And then a random one with Jez Smith against Ben Ridings. You know, Jez Smith talking the talk like 
Doherty did last week and he came up short. Ben Ridings with hardly any experience just diving in for a shot at the big time on Sky Sports. And then you go to the heavyweight fights. I mean, if you watch Babich against Little, how can you not tune in on Saturday night to watch that? Babich is a complete nutcase. Tom Little has got himself in shape, the shape of his life. And as for no party, no lati, I mean, I, I really think this is a dangerous fight for Fabio Wardley. You see with Richard Larty, you just have no idea what he's thinking or what he's going to do. And he lets his hands go. He has a great chin. And you've got to be very, very careful not to fall into trading with someone like that. Larty has told me, I'm coming to knock out Fabio Wardley and become a star in the UK. And the main event is a cracker. I mean, I'm very, very nervous for Conor Ben. Formella, you know, not only does he fight well, he speaks really well. He's intelligent. He understands what he has to do in this fight. He talks about the experience of coming off that points loss to Sean Porter last time out. This is a massive step up for Conor Ben. Massive. And we don't know if he's good enough. What we've seen only in the gym tells us we believe he is. On Saturday night, it'll unfold for you live on Sky Sports. And this is a brilliant, brilliant card as we keep rolling on. We keep rolling on as we get up for the big one. Anthony Joshua against Kubrat Pulev, just a few weeks to go. Have you been up and seen him? Um, and if you don't mind me asking, you saying it on the stream, how, how was he? Um, what sort of mood was he in? I went to see him yesterday. Um, he looked absolutely sensational. Sensational. And, you know, he's, he's moving so well. You know, he, we know he's brought in a couple of new trainers with Rob McCracken leading the way. He's learning. You know, he's punching so hard, so sharp, so fast. I think... This is going to be a tough fight against Kubrat Pulev. I also think he is going to absolutely destroy him. I think he's going to break him down, he's going to dissect him, and he's going to punish him. I think you're going to see a statement. I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but I really do. That's what I think. You know, AJ will be always a relaxed, humble guy. Look, you know, but I really believe, having seen here the improvements that he's made, the spite in his punches, I think you're going to get a thrilling display from Anthony Joshua. I'm nervous. It's behind closed doors. He's never experienced this before in the pros. He's used to walking out in front of 90,000, just 20 yards over there. This is a different kind of challenge. This is the acid test before the big one. All he's got to do is beat Kubrat Pulev, and I really believe he's going to do it in a brilliant style and prove to everyone he's the best heavyweight in the world. When you go up there, do they sort of shut up shop? Do you just talk about what's in front of you? So it's Pulev, Pulev, Pulev. Or are you talking to him about fearing no, that? Or is that no, just shut out no. now? I mean, one, I wouldn't do it. And two, if I did, he'd tell me to be quiet. Because, you know, we know on June the 1st in 2019, the world got tipped on his head at Madison Square Garden when he lost to Andy Ruiz. And all everybody was talking about was, how do we get the world to fight? How do we get the world to fight? Keep trying to get the world to fight. And you, before you know it in this game, especially in that division... Everything can tip on its head, and it did do against Ruiz. You know, he was still focused on Andy Ruiz, but everyone was thinking about the bigger picture. Not one person in the camp is talking about Tyson Fury. I just know that if he deals with Kubrat Pulev, the only fight and the only job I've got is to make that fight with Tyson Fury immediately. He wants that fight bad, but he also knows he's fighting one of the best heavyweights in the world against Kubrat Pulev. Great amateur experience. Only one defeat as a pro against Vladimir Klitschko. He's beaten people consistently over the years. He's dangerous. He's tough. He's durable. But honestly, from what I've seen from Anthony Joshua, I really believe you're going to get one hell of a performance December 12th on Sky Sports Box Office. Just finally, what's your percentage chance that you think that you can make AJ Fury in 2021? 50%, 60%? No, it's completely over to them. We have the dynamics of the deal in place. I don't want to hear... Oh, Fury, no, I'm thinking about fighting in March or April. Why? Just go straight into the AJ fight. It's going to be the same time frame. Now, he boxed in February. It's not like he's been out. He didn't box in 2020. And listen, Tyson Fury you know, doesn't want to take a small fight. I mean, they couldn't even get the money together to give him a fight in December. So let's give him plenty of money. Let's give him the biggest fight. Fury wants to fight AJ, unquestionably. And AJ wants to fight Fury. It's no conversation to be had until AJ's hand is raised on December 12th. Once that is made, let's get it on. Let's give everyone the fight they want and deserve and hopefully cheer us all up in 2021. Brilliant. Thank you for joining us on the stream. That's sort of a nice place to finish, I think. So thank you for everyone that sent some questions in and some comments. And uh, you can join us again for the same sort of thing tomorrow, the weigh-in.